this is Sandra, Source Outreach Ministries, and we are putting together the, um, we're, we picked 12 demonic spirits that we're going to talk about today. We did the overcoming of the flesh, all those different types of uh, situations that um, attack the flesh. But what really it is, is a spirit that first manifests itself in you, and then the action is what the uh, overcoming the flesh is when it starts acting it out, the symptoms. Okay, so we're going to talk about today the lying spirit, number one, the lying spirit. That's Satan. Satan is a lying spirit. He Everything he says and does is a lie. It is. There's no truth in it. Everything, the things that he does right now with the fake news, with our, uh, when he, he comes and takes over our um, government, a lot of that is lies. Our health care system is a lot of that is lies. You have to discern to de decide what is true and what is not. And that's what we're talking about today is the discerning, the understanding. And you need to read this Bible. The Bible is the only truth on this earth. Okay, everything in the Bible is truth. Everything that's prophesied in the Bible will take place. And um, so you need to read it. It's like a roadmap showing us the things to come, the things that have already happened, how God operates, what is his beliefs, what is his feelings, and what Jesus came to um, the earth to save us from our sin, that we would have a choice, a free choice, because God gave us free choice, a choice to choose his son and be saved and have eternal life or to stay in the world and follow Satan. There's no in between. Okay. So I just really want you to get this. This is really important because in the times that we live in right now, we don't know what's left. We don't know how long things are going to be. As you see, so much is going on right now. The um, weather is unbelievable. People are trapped in their own houses. Uh, they're talking about lack of food is coming. Something, Some things are coming from outer space. That is a cycle that's returning in our time, our lifespan. And there's going to be some damage put on the earth and life's lost. So that's why I'm coming to you all the time to ask you to wake up, to give your life to Jesus. It's not going to save you from dying but when you die, if you know the Lord, you can have everlasting life instead of going to the pit with the Satan and all his demonic uh, principalities that are operating in this world. It's going to be eternal damnation for you. And it's really something to think about. A lot of people, you know, you go to the movies and you watch all these Avengers movies and Marvel's movies. But if you really look at these movies, it kind of plays on the Bible. If you know the Bible on different things. And so you have to really look at it, discern it, read into it. Man is giving you some ideas of what is coming because yes, he did read the Bible. And so he's putting it in a movie form about uh, Armageddon, Armageddon, however you say that, you know, the end of time, asteroids coming from outer space, all these different things are in movies. And we, most of us look at it as entertainment, but if you look at it and you know the Bible, it is education, it's knowledge, and you can look and see what might be happening in your lifetime or your children's lifetime, because we don't know the date or the time. Only the Lord knows that. But we must get saved, follow the path that was given to you before you were even born, like what I'm doing. I'm um, making videos. I'm going out in the streets trying to save the hopeless, offering them Bibles, the things that I do, you know, helping people and making videos and learning this Bible so that I can do things and even learning about um, deliverance, you know, because we all need to be delivered from demonic sources that have attached to us in our lifetime and in our family's lifetime, ancestral curses and all that stuff. So no one teaches you this. No one teaches you this. I didn't learn this so way late in life. OK, a lot of the new age, they're teaching you from a perspective of Satan. And a lot of it is lies like yoga and uh, uh, different other things, channeling and all those other things. That is demonic. That is not of the Lord. OK, the only deliverance of the Lord is through Jesus Christ. That's the only one that you can deliver something off somebody in the name of Jesus Christ. 
And that's it. Simple as that. And you have to already, if if you're not a believer, you have to first say, be saved. Because if you try to um, deliver a non-believer, you will take the demon out, but he will go and bring seven back and put it in you because you haven't replaced it with the Holy Spirit that lives in you. You haven't activated that. You don't have Jesus Christ in your life to know the difference. And so it's really, really uh, important to know that you must first be saved. That's why in the overcoming the flesh, we talk about salvation. We talk about the Holy Spirit and um, different things before you start learning about overcoming your flesh and knowing the different spirits that attach to us during our life or past life ancestry. Okay, so we're going to get on with this. The lying spirit is Satan himself. He lies. This world is full of lies. You need to understand and learn the difference. Okay, it says like for all men will prove to be a snare. See, a snare means like keep you trapped. You know, a snare is like Satan is a demonic. But whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Okay. That's what we're talking about here. Give your life to Jesus so you can learn the difference and you can start to walk in a path that's a righteous path, okay? And then that's in Proverbs 29, 25. You go ahead and read it. Don't believe me. Read the Bible, okay? And then um, the next part of this is lying spirits will purposely confuse you. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. And that's what's going on right now in our government. In our news, they're saying Christians are bad and everything else is good. So, you know, you have to look at this and understand this because you're going to be caught up in all this deception. And it says that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Isn't that interesting? That put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So it's reversing everything. Satan reverses everything to the benefit of him and then tries to make people not want to know Jesus, not want to be part of Jesus and stick with him because he wants everyone to be, uh, he wants to steal, kill, and destroy you. He wants everyone to perish and go with him. He doesn't want any of uh, anyone to go with the Lord. Even the ones that are already believers, he hopes he can turn them where they then give it up. Okay. It's a battle between good and evil. Jesus Christ, his father and the Holy Spirit and Satan and all his minions. Okay. This is as simple as that. Just the stuff you watch in movies, same thing but in reality of the humanity, okay? And then you could read this in Isaiah 5, chapter 5, verse 20, okay? And this says, as a Christian, you cannot be possessed or fully ruled by the enemy. That's what we're talking about. You must first give your life to Jesus, but he can always tempt you. He can tempt your family. He can cause you havoc. You're not, you're not uh, void of it, okay? But yet you're reading the Bible and you're learning the difference and you're learning how to uh, rebuke him. You know, because we're supposed to step on Satan, step on him, and and not allow him to, to control our life. Okay. And it says, however, you can be harassed, oppressed, and beat down by failing to cast out these spirits. See, because a lot of times you get you give your life to Jesus in a church, right? But they don't deliver you. It's so interesting. I In 2011, I was baptized, gave my life to Jesus. But I didn't know that I need to be delivered. I didn't know what might be inside of me. Okay. And then it, until uh, 2000, last year, 2022, I, uh, my daughter met people who deliver you. And we went and watched it. It was amazing. And then we decided to go ahead and be delivered because we were already saved by the Lord. But we had some stuff in us hindering us. So it's so interesting how things work, because when you go to a, a religious church, not a relationship church, you, even a relationship church, they don't do deliverance. OK, so you need to find people that are Christians that do deliverance. And it's so important for you to find that. OK, and then it says there's a stronghold is formed by a wrong pattern of thinking by the believer. OK, because you, you might really want to be doing all the right things for God, but there's these things of uh, a spirit of fatigue, a spirit of infirmity, a uh, spirit of lies, the things that are attached to you that hinder you from doing your full purpose, okay? And it says, after a stronghold is formed, it can be used by an unclean spirit to, inf 
influence of believers actions see your actions it hinders you okay and your habits and your lifestyle so you would you always be straying you'll be doing things you shouldn't be doing because you have the spirit that's always whispering to you and encouraging you to do these things and you'd be wondering why am i thinking this why do i have this terrible anger why do i be jealous why do i have pride okay all those things that we're not supposed to be having okay but it, it, and it starts as a child because a child copies their parents. Okay. And then this is why it's incredibly important to be able to recognize these spirits and tear down these strongholds. Okay. That's why we're doing this series to help you. There's many other series out here with the same thing, but we wanted to do it our way. Okay. It's still scriptures. It's still all the same truth. And we just hope that you will get it and do it. All right. All right, a lying spirit in John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, you are of your father, the devil, a Satan. Okay, he has many names. Um, and you will, and your will is to do your father's desire. So if you're in the world, you are living in lies. You're doing the uh, Satan's work for him, like people in uh, politics, people in the entertainment world. Now you look at um, what they did at the... Um, what was it? The Super Bowl, the 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 halftime, very demonic. The Grammys, demonic. The singers, demonic. And people think of that as entertainment because they don't understand, they don't discern and know the difference, and they think it's all good, but it's not. All right. And then it says, "He was a murderer from the beginning." Yes. And does not stand in the truth. Yes, he's a liar because there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character because that's how he is. He wants to take the place of God. That's why he was thrown out of heaven. He was jealous, prideful, all those things that we studied in overcoming the flesh. Okay. For he is a liar and he is the father of lies. He is the 100% father of lies. Okay. And the definition of lying is dishonest, untruthful, and false. Okay. And it says some people can't. People can't tell a lie, which is good, and others can't tell the truth, okay, because they don't know the difference, and others can't tell the difference, as I just said, okay? So, so it says, the Lord detests lying lips, because everything you think comes out of your mouth. And that's attached for, to your heart because your heart is wrong. Your heart is in a bad place. Your heart is being deceived. Your heart has all these issues in it. And so once the heart has these feelings, it comes out of your mouth with different things and actions. Okay. And then the people, and it says, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. See, if you're a good person and you're trustworthy, the Lord delights in that. Okay. And that's in Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. So in Ephesians chapter six, verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. And that's another subject that we probably could do a study on, on all the different armors of God. Okay. I think my daughter did that in um, Sim um, Simplicity series. She had, she did that. So check that out on the Bible talk show. And cause you have to, every morning you have to ask the Lord to, to search your heart. And, and try to get rid of all the things that might be in there that manifested in your, in you from the day before. And you have to rebuke that out and you have to ask the Lord, to, you have to put on your armor every day before you step out into the world so that you'll be protected. The armor uh, of the by knowing the Bible and all those different things. And so, um, so that's really important for you. Okay. And then um, this is really good. Um, it's the, the Leviathan, an ancient spirit. A Leviathan is Satan too. Leviathan is uh, from the sea, okay? And it says, and he has attached on to the, behind the media lies, our government, our media is so many lies. You have to discern and try to figure out what's true and not true. When you look on the YouTube, what's true and not true. And if you don't have the basic Bible study lessons to know their Bible, you it would be impossible to determine what's true and not true. And if you don't have Jesus and the Holy Spirit and and and, the, and God Almighty in your heart, you're not going to be able to discern the difference. Okay. And this was uh, by Sid Roth and Lance Wall now um, is talking. So I'm going to play that and let you listen to it. Okay. 
never seen America and actually the rest of the countries of the world so divided or divided politically, racially, economically, every area you can think of. But not just divided to the point of anger and violence and mur even murder. I've never seen this before. My guest says it's not flesh and blood. You guys are looking at the national. My guest says it's an ancient demonic spirit that he knows how to stop it in his track. Anyone interested in finding out? You know, that 13 years ago, uh, Lance and I uh, developed a friendship, and uh, you and your wife came to Israel with me because I was going to speak at a New Age festival. We didn't know what to expect, but it was a horror story. That's the only way I can describe it. It had rained the day before, and we were walking, flushing through the mud. Uh, and other uh, people live with drugs and looking the way they uh, normally look at these new age festivals. And so I, I start my lecture and we bumped into a spirit, an ancient spirit, and both of us were not aware of it until after it surfaced. Uh, Lance, what was your recollection of that? I mean, it was like Woodstock. That was what was unusual. Yeah. Who expects Woodstock in Israel? So, and I'm going down there with you, and I figure, okay, we're going to have a like a nice Christian tent meeting. We get into this tent, and uh, it was the most bizarre and enlightening experience of my life, because I could never understand when Paul would preach, and there was these riots breaking up. In any church, the ushers grab somebody before anything gets out of God. I'd never been in a riot. You created a riot. You start talking, and they got they have nude swimmers in the back of the foreground in the ocean, we got people with like uh, mascara on and 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 uh, wood voodoo hats. It was bizarre. Canes walking around doing curses on them, and then we got people manifesting, shouting and sin right in the middle of this message, and they're cursing at them, dropping these obscene words. And I'm standing there in shock. I'm thinking, I didn't expect this at a at a, at a meeting. <laughs> and, and the yelling is going on. And sin is engaging this person who's yelling back at him. I said, this is total chaos. And in the middle of it, one guy who's clearly not a Christian, a Jewish guy, is on, on, laying down on a towel watching on this, and he sits up and he goes, wait a second, hey, I don't know what all you guys are yelling about, but my back just got healed. <laughs> so, he goes, so he goes, what? In the middle of all of this, your back got healed? Is anybody else getting touched by God? And this is stupefying the people yelling at you because now they're being interrupted by a supernatural act and they're, they're, they don't know what to say. They were, they were cussing at you. That worked. Now this guy's into other people again. Hey, my neck. And he's, well, check it out. Whatever's wrong. But I just what you did not know and what I did not know, I left and I thought, I failed you guys miserably. That's, I mean, I saw the healing and, and a few people raised their hands, a bunch of these were Jewish people uh, and received the Lord, but I, I just figured what a mess. I'm sorry I even got involved. I get back to the States and I find out one young man got saved who today is the leading evangelist, Messianic Jewish evangelist in Israel. You know, you know you see it. What I have you don't know what God's doing in your life. I mean, out, out of nowhere, USA Today has, has an article. They, they they say you're one of the few people that prophesied Donald Trump would win. Uh, you even went beyond that. You talked about well, what would occur. I, I, he'd be like Cyrus. He, he, would, he would do some things for America that like no one else could possibly do. Um, he had a best-selling book before he won, saying he was going, how could you be so sure he was going to win? Well, that's, I think that uh, ignorance is bliss. I was so focused on the battle for America. There was such an urgency in me for the outcome of this thing that uh, and I had people come up to me and say, Lance, why would you destroy your whole ministry credibility yeah. on a political prediction? People can go down this. And I said, look, I, it's not a political prediction. I'm just saying what I heard God say. 
Isaiah 45 it will be the 45th president. I believe that this has to happen in America, and I think the church has a choice. And, you know, most people don't know this, but the victory that he had in the Electoral College was based on 0.008% of the total votes. And that means 0.008% of the total votes showed up in five swing states that gave him the Electoral College. It looked as though he had the Electoral College sweep with 300 votes, but the reality is it was the Christian turnout at the last minute that produced the 0.008 in five swing states. In other words, God did this by a razor thin margin and a remnant of believers really determined the future for the United States. And it gives me just goosebumps to realize that it always comes down for us right. to the remnant. It's a remnant that'll make a difference in America and the world. Right, so I have to ask you a personal question. You're so involved in the political arena today. Uh, has this been a passion for many years? Not at all. Absolutely. I hate politics. And uh, I was so ignorant. I don't blame you. <laughs> I don't tell you, I'm so ignorant in politics. I had a door open up in Washington to uh, through the Cedars Fellowship years ago, which works with all these ambassadors. And, and I, I wanted to go down and do global evangelism. And at dinner, I'm meeting with a major senator's wife and stuff. And I was saying, you know who would be a good person to run with your husband on a ticket? And I suggested somebody who was from the other party. And it was like, <laughs> it was so stupid. Everybody stared at me. And I said, you know what? I don't know what I'm talking about. I have no political bearings whatsoever. I'm a revivalist. I'm like, I want to talk about revival. And then you find yourself in Trump Towers with President Trump. Uh, and, and you're saying, God, how did I get here? And he spoke to you. No, that was ridiculous. I, I mean, I'm on my second trip there, and both times I've felt uncomfortable. But the second trip, I was brought in, imagine this, I was brought in by some of the African-American leaders who wanted to deal with building better race relationships with Donald Trump. Uh, and, uh, and when I'm up there, in you know, the second visit, and everybody's yelling, all this activity, I'm saying, I'm not, I don't want to be in politics, I don't want to be in race issues, I just want to preach the Bible. And uh, that was when the Lord said to me, I'm only answering your prayers. And it was just like a clear thought, because I thought I'm off track. And I said, Lord, when did I ever pray that I wanted to get involved with presidential politics or complicated race relations? And the Lord said, every time you pray in tongues, you tell me you want to get involved with healing the nation's problems, and I'm mm -hmm. putting you where you can do it. At that moment, I thought, my gosh, like you, I'm a, I'm a passionate believer in praying in the Spirit. But I thought I was praying something else. I thought I was praying for financial support. <laughs> you know, I was praying my way into Trump Towers. You were praying God's kingdom be on earth as it, it is. And that's what you're and after that, Every time I pray in tongues, and I think I have no idea what I'm setting myself up for, but it's the plan of God. Okay. Now, we have a phenomenon that everyone's talking about. It's called fake news. You know what's behind that phenomenon. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm watching the fake. Now I know this is a spiritual battle going on with Trump. I mean, it is clearly a spiritual battle, and um, and the reason I know that is because the just the manifestation. I mean, you you do the supernatural show. If if there is in your synagogue, everything is normal, and Jesus comes in, and suddenly somebody starts screaming and yelling and cuss, you know the problem isn't the new preacher. The problem is that there's an anointing on what's happening, and it's driving to the surface something is hidden. It is like what happened at the New Age Festival. Precisely. It was the chaos that was yeah. going on because of the anointing. And you and I are looking at it thinking something's wrong. It was actually an evidence that God's power was visiting. But the, you have identified there is an ancient spirit behind this. Tell me about that spirit. Yes, because I'm saying these manifestations in the nation, the race riots, the this riot, the that, the Berkeley, these are manifestations of demons. Sid. This is demons stirring up flesh into, and why are people so passionately and ideologically uh, toxic over this? So here's how the spirit works. It is a world ruling class spirit. There are spiritual principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness of this world. This is a world ruler. It is the prince behind mind control. So when you're in like propaganda stuff like Nazi Germany or in communist Malwo, this spirit works through mind control on a mass level. And it works in order to divide people against people. So Satan knows that if he can create 
poor against rich, male against female, young against old, black against white, heterosexual, homosexual. The more division he can create, the more power he can consolidate. This spirit is an expert at serving Lucifer in sowing division to divide people to create new power structures. And by the way, it's not just politics. It's It hits you right in your home, right in your church, right in your children's school. It, it doesn't discriminate. It hits everyone. Uh, Lance, uh, it, 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 the word Leviathan means twisting serpent. Right. Uh, like a crocodile or an alligator. Right. Uh, tell me why. Well, it's referred in Job as a creature of the Nile. So mm -hmm. we really do know that it's talking about this species. And the way that it operates is 40% of the crocodile is teeth. So that tells you that this spirit mostly is in the mouth. It's mostly a communicating spirit. Big mouth. A big mouth, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and, and it's teeth like a crocodile. When a crocodile fastens on you, it doesn't have uh, the ability to move its jaws. So what it does, and you see these on like National Geographic, you'll see this spinning, like in the, yeah. meanwhile on the knob, this thing is spinning, this poor water buffalo is getting, you know, tormented. What they do is they'll, the two of them at a time will go up and sneak up. Here's the key. They're undetected. Then they suddenly come up, grab a hold of a limb, some vulnerable point, Mm -hmm. and they do what's called the death spiral. They sink their teeth in, and they spin and use their body weight to tear the limb off. And by dismembering, they can destroy. If that isn't working, they spin and pull you under into their realm and cut off the oxygen. And I'm looking at that and saying, five times in the Bible, this spirit's referred to as Leviathan and is in the water. And Lord, what is it that you're saying about the operation of this? And here's the pretty clear truth. David said, as a king, all day long do my enemies twist my words. They're my enemies without a cause. Meaning David had political adversaries who would seize on anything he said in order to distort the meaning of it to divide his administration. You know what? We have all seen that happen in our life. I won't even mention the names, but two names that are household words in Christendom. I was at a planning meeting with them. And I, I made a stay. I, I spoke for a little bit. I sat down, and one of these two got up and said, I'll take what anyone says, but I cannot take what you just said. Not thinking, what did I say? These are national leaders. And they said, you cannot say it is wrong to evangelize Jewish people. And I thought, that's the last thing I'd ever say. And, and, and a woman sitting next to me that I didn't even know stands up and says, he didn't say that. And it was Leviathan. Exactly. It makes no sense whatsoever. Exactly. Now imagine if he hadn't spoken it. He could have walked out of there and thought it and, thought it and said to other people, and gosh, in a closed room, mm -hmm. I heard what Sid Roth said. Would you let me go, oh, he said what? Now the division starts. Now the dismembering starts. And that's how that spirit works. When this thing works, what I've noticed is that spirit, it's called the king over the children of pride in Job, which means that when you're under that influence, you'll notice that people that are actually torqued out by this spirit are not in a teachable moment. If you try to correct them, uh, it's difficult to win the argument, which is why your approach on dealing with the spirit has to be the wisdom. That's why we that's why we do training in the, in the material that we've got and how to deal with it. Because there's three levels of stronghold. In politics, in ideology, in religion, from Islam, Christian, three levels of stronghold. And this, by the way, is in Pentecostal teaching. This is the three levels of stronghold we work with in corporations when we're changing a corporate culture. The first level is opinion. People just have opinions because they pick it up like virus. They just pick it up on social media and friends. The second level is belief. The third level is conviction. The hardest one to beat is the conviction level. What this spirit does when it gets a hold of you is, it moves you almost supernaturally into angry conviction. It's not people get become radically convinced. Isn't this right. what we're seeing in the in the fake news? That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's it goes. It's not even an opinion. It's a conviction, and people yeah. are certain they're right. But pride makes you unteachable. So it's like, how do you win the argument with that? So this spirit is doing a a breakup job on America. It does it on marriages. It does it on businesses and churches. Okay. We recognize this spirit. We've seen it operate in our life, in our families, in our nation. Enough is enough. Let's 
All right. You listen to that, right? Kind of sums up the um, the lesson for today. Um, it says the lying tongue. Evil people listen to evil ideas and liars listen to lies. Proverbs 17, verse four. So I hope you enjoyed this. Hope you get something out of it. And I come back next week for our next lesson. God bless.